What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're checking out a game that I've been very, very excited about. A game that basically draws very heavily from Darkest Dungeon but also has its own spin. We're checking out Warsaw, which is basically Darkest Dungeon in occupied Poland in World War II where you're playing as the resistance fighting back the Nazi oppressors. Oh yes. If that sounds like the proper spin on things to you, then hey, you're spinning the same direction I am. Let's start a new game. Check this thing on out. I have practiced a little bit, so we won't be playing any of the tutorials today. Uh, this year is 1944. Battered by opposing forces on two fronts, the Third Reich begins to crumble. In Central Europe, Poland lies at the heart of the storm. Caught between the waning Nazi oppression and the rising Soviet threat, there is little hope for release. Despite the unfavorable odds, the Polish Home Army, now an underground resistance movement, is given the go-ahead by the country's government in exile. It's the final part of the countrywide Operation Tempest, there to launch one last act of defiance, an uprising in Warsaw, Poland's capital city. August 1st, 1944. The W Hour. Okay, so we're going to be skipping the tutorial on a lot of this stuff because I've already like played for an hour or two because I'm addicted and I really, really like this game. And so I'll explain things as we go. Welcome to the world map. So the world map in this game is different than the map in Darkest Dungeon. In Darkest Dungeon, you'll remember that you go like right. That's pretty much it. And then you go through doors and find secrets and stuff like that. This game has an open map with all of the streets of Warsaw. And you can move around freely. But as you move, you're going to lose AP. And when the AP runs out, you fail your mission if you haven't done the objectives that have been listed for you. For right now, we're just trying to make it back home to our hideout. So... We know that on the map there's two events and one battle, so let's get moving. We've got three characters, Jadwiga. Uh, sorry if I butcher the names, by the way. As you might have guessed, I'm not Polish, and so, like, Polish names can be pretty challenging for English speakers. They've got lots of letters that, like, we don't use a whole lot, like C's next to Z's and stuff like that. So if I know I've got a lot of Polish viewers, all right, I've seen my metrics... So if I butcher any of the names in this game or any of the locations or anything else, I apologize. That's my bad. I'm just terrible at reading and I'm not cultured, okay? Uh, we've got Kristoff. I mean, it's got a Z right there. Krzysztof. I'm just going to call him Kristoff, okay? And then we've got Kazimierz. Sounds good. On her, she's got a Nagant 1895. That's a mighty fine pistol right there. Pretty good. And she's got a med kit. Uh, this guy right here, Kristoff. He's got himself a Car 98, which is one of the most mass-produced rifles in human history. There's the Nagant, the Mosin Nagant, the Car 98, and I believe the AK-47, AK-74 variants are one of the highest-produced weapons in history as well. Oh yeah, that's a pretty popular gun. There's a lot of them left over in the world right now. He's also got a Piat. He's got himself a rocket launcher, dudes. A rocket launcher. Oh yes. Uh, this guy over here, he's got a DP-27, which is a heavy machine gun. Uh, it's basically a bipodded machine gun, and he's got himself a Car 98 as well, so he can kind of do some of the same stuff that Kristoff does. Uh, let's head over to Plas Grzybowski. Okay. Obtaining ammunition. Uh, this game uses ammo every time you attack, and so instead of carrying torches and shovels and things like that, your party carries bullets, and you actually actively fire them every single turn while you're in combat, and when you run out, you're out, and that's it. You just gotta deal with it. Before you set out to the rally point, the first order of business is to arm yourself. Your team arrives to receive their assigned share of ammunition from a resistance arsenal, and not a moment too soon. A Nazi patrol appears in the distance, likely armed by the unusual activity in the district. If you want to rendezvous with the uprising, you will have to fight your way through. Well, hell yeah, dude! Ain't There ain't nothing more patriotic than fighting Nazis. Let's go. If Captain America's down, so am I. Let's do this thing. We got a Nazi patrol up here. Let's take them out. All right, we're going to skip the combat tutorial. All you need to know is that your characters can move around in eight separate spaces. If the space that you occupy is on the same line and behind a piece of cover, you will take reduced damage every time you get hit, meaning that cover is very, very important in this game if you're trying to reduce the amount of damage you're taking, which is important because the enemy frequently outnumbers you. And while that might not seem like a big deal, it actually is in this game because for every single unit you have on the battlefield, you get an extra turn. So you have these things called activations. Every time you have an activation, that means you get to pick one action for any of your characters to take. 
it differs from from Darkest Dungeon in this way. So Darkest Dungeon, you have initiative, and then you just go in order of initiative. Whoever's the fastest goes first, all the way down to the slowest person. This game, if I wanted to, I could have Kristoff attack three times with all three of my activations, but there's a catch to that. He's got these three little pips right here. That's his stamina, and you get nerfs every single time you lose a stamina. So with one stamina gone, I think you're pretty much solid, all right? Uh, if you've got two stamina gone, you start to, like, aim worse, and if you've got three stamina gone, you basically take, like, double damage. And so you really don't want to overutilize your soldiers to the point of exhaustion. Every single time you run out of activations, it'll start a new turn, and then you'll get one stamina back on every single character. So as of right now, we will take turns playing our activations. So I pick a person who will shoot, then they pick a person who will shoot, then I pick a person, and so on and so forth until all activations have run out. For right now, I think it's a really good idea for Kristoff. Actually, no, we're not going to use the rocket launcher. That's a bit gratuitous. Let's start with single shot, and we're going to shoot this little guy in the back. He's out of cover right now, and we're also on a different row from him, so he is flanked, which means we have, like, fantastic accuracy. Let's go for it. 31 damage right there. He's basically almost dead already. That guy's going to throw a granata at us. So he was a soldaten with a granata, and unfortunately he has gifted that to us, and now he's been hit in the face with it. Uh, what I want to do then is we're going to run first aid, and we're going to put that on Kristoff. There we go. Uh, he's going to fire around as well at Kristoff. I usually like to save my healing for the last activation, and I broke my rule right there, and now I'm living with the consequences. Finish him off. Goodbye. One less Nazi in the world of Warsaw. That means Warsaw is inherently a better place now. Uh, let's see here. We can go... Let's start off with Target Acquired, which allows him to shoot to the front. 14 damage right there. Not bad. It would have been better if we had had a flank, but, you know, sometimes you don't have a flank. Uh, we've taken a little bit of damage. You do want to pay attention to the total amount of damage you take in this game as you're fighting, because there's basically little pips that are invisible that you can't see, and if you ever take damage, like, further than that point, after combat, you'll end up with a wound, which means that they can't go into combat until that wound is healed. It'll be things like broken legs, arms, stuff like that, and so, like, be careful about it. Med kits will not fix that. There's nothing you can do if you let your- if you get hit by like, an enemy too hard, basically, you're stuck. And you've got yourself a big old problem. Uh, go ahead and full auto on him with a flank. Yeah, 22 damage right there. Take it straight to the chest. Okay. We're going to do the same thing right here. Give it to him. What's he going to do? He's going to throw another grenade. Man, this man loves his grenades. Then again, he's got a whole sack full of them like Easter eggs. And so I figure, you know, he's probably going to shoot us with a lot of grenades. It seems to be implied by his equipment. We'll get a heal going right there. Uh, she's got clear shot. That's not really that helpful. Let's fire the rocket launcher at him. Yeah, dude, you've got to fire the rocket launcher at least once during this entire thing. You are now victorious. Very nice. Okay. Death is permanent in this game. That's a very, very good point. Anybody that dies in this game is gone for good. And some of these guys are storyline characters that have, like, exposition and narrative and stuff like that. So you kind of don't want to lose them. If you notice, their hearts right now, they've lost one of their hearts. That's because their health got too low during that combat. They took too much damage. And so now they're wounded. All we have to do at this point, now that we've killed the Nazi patrol, is head over to this event. With the patrol gone, your team has a clear path now. Having emerged victorious from their first real assignment... Your team descends into the city's sewer network to reach the rally point. There is little time to celebrate, however, for the hard part comes next. The uprising is now in full swing. The long battle has begun. Alright, complete the mission. We walk away victorious. So, this is the mission summary menu right here. So basically, there's a cycle to everything that's outside of the actual missions. You have your mission summary... Then you have an event that you'll have to resolve that decides, like, basically the morale in all of the districts and things like that. Then you move on to the next day where you'll pick another mission. So, there are these districts right here. These districts, we're kind of trying to keep an eye on them. As their morale falls off, we will get less and less supplies from these. Think of supplies as gold. Supplies are basically what you barter and beg with in order to get the supplies you need in order to keep upgrading and fighting and getting further into the game. If you get choked out and you can't get enough supplies, basically the resistance dies. In addition, there's also this thing called attrition over here. I don't know exactly what attrition does, 
but I'll get back to you once I figure that out. I must have missed that when I was playing for like the last hour or so, but like it didn't really come into effect, and so like, eh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Let's do our event. Urged by the sudden din of panic, you enter a circle of onlookers that have gathered at the base. An armed man, one you recognize as a fellow resistance fighter, sways back and forth on shaky feet. His ashen face contorted in equal measure by despair and delusion. Slurring out words and abrupt chunks of speech, he gets more agitated the longer the situation unfolds, and the gun in his hands isn't making anything less tense. Well, we can try and knock him out. Let's do it. As your teammate jumps in to wrangle the man, they quickly learn the opponent is stronger than they appear. In a flurry of wheezes, screams, and curses, and with some help from nearby onlookers, the unstable resistance finder is finally and clumsily pinned to the ground. Your teammate, however, has earned some bruises for the effort. Okay, well, that event didn't go so great. But at least we didn't lose morale or anything in any of our districts, because that can happen too. Like, there are things you're going to have to contemplate along the way. Like, do you execute collaborators, for example? Uh, what do you do when you think there's a spy in the base? Like, there's a lot of interesting events that you can get. Uh, we're going to... I'm actually going to continue this right here. Because I'm curious what this all means. So to keep the fighting, the uprising consumes resources in the districts. See, I wanted it to tell me... I wanted it to tell me what exactly attrition does. But it didn't say in there. Alright, well either way, let me click through all this stuff. Okay, so having clicked through everything to get rid of the tutorials now that I came back fruitlessly, uh, you can click on all these people to figure out what's going on with them. Basically, we've got ourselves the mission map. This is our spy guy. He's in charge of, he's basically our spy master who tells us where to go and where to get things done. Uh, these are all, we can take a new mission from right here. We can also go on excursions, I guess. Uh, we have the nurse. If we need to heal somebody, the nurse takes care of it. That's basically the way that we take care of the business. Uh, I think we can take them out again if we need to, but for now, it's probably a bad idea. Uh, we've got our arsenal over here where we can buy more bullets, we can buy more guns, we can buy gear, we can buy commendations for leveling up. Basically stuff just to help us out along the mission way. I've actually never had somebody get wounded in the tutorial before. I've played it like three times that first mission. I've never had somebody get wounded. It must be from the event, would be my guess, because normally they heal back up to full after the mission just this once so that you can jump into the next mission, but she's actually in the med bay right now getting healed. So, like, I guess the event wounded her. Now, we've got the codex over here. This will allow you to open this on up, and you can learn about the characters, the guns, and the enemies you'll be fighting, their backstories, how they were used, little historical tidbits and things. And we've got recruitment over on this side, where you'll get randomly generated characters that will fill in, just in case your storyline characters are wounded and left out. Uh, my suggestion would be that, yeah, we've already got a healer, and he's also got a grenade launcher on him. So we'll probably use him for sure. Uh, we need another one, though. So there you go. We've got Philip and we've got Adam. Philip is a pitolero. Okay, he likes to fight himself. He can build barricades and he can fire a pistol. This guy right here has himself a rocket launcher and a med kit. So he's going in hard in the paint right now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a new mission and just see how it goes. This game is very difficult by comparison, in my opinion, to Darkest Dungeon. It may be due to the fact that I don't really know the meta yet, and I haven't figured out all the secret tricks that help you kill Nazis faster. But, until we get to that point, I will say that my first couple hours in this game have been raw. Like, I've gotten, I've gotten beat the hell up pretty badly. Uh, we've got a mission over here. We can intercept high-risk Nazi patrols in the area. We get a damaged SMG for that. We've got another mission over here in Zola Bors. So bury those that were lost to war. So we've got to bury dead bodies. We get a free SMG for that one. And if we ignore it, the district will gain an attrition point. We've got recover uprising assets. So this is a supply run. We can get a free grenade and accommodation. And it looks like the rest of the locations don't have a mission for us right now. I think burying the dead probably sounds... I don't know if this is an easy mission. Uh, these missions do vary pretty wildly in their difficulty. You can kind of get a rough idea of how hard they are by looking at the amount of supplies, I guess. But, like, I honestly, I don't really have a hard rule of thumb for you right now for how you pick missions. I can tell you in the beginning that anything that incorporates a lot of combat is not going to work out for you. It's been my experience. Being as gung-ho as I am about fighting for freedom, I took combat missions on my first run, like, every single time, it did not work out great. The Nazis are very well equipped in this game. They have you seriously outnumbered, and you will take some damage trying to get them taken down. 
And then, you know, so I find that in the beginning, it's usually easier to do stuff like burying dead bodies or grabbing supply caches just to sort of keep yourself safe. Uh, we've got our guys over here. Looks good. I definitely want the healer, so we're going to take him and put him in the back. Uh, we'll put Kazimierz up front. We'll put Kristoff, like, right there, maybe. And then we'll leave Jadwiga inside of the... We'll leave her in the reserves for right now. And we'll take our Pistolero over here. And I'll probably put him up front somewhere to soak some damage, maybe. Now, uh, we got to pick how many bullets we want to take with us. I don't think we need that many small arms bullets. But I do think we need rifle rounds, and I do think we need demolitions. We can bring compasses with us, which will allow us to save AP while we travel around the map. You can also bring med kits, which they cost 10 AP, but you can heal people up in between missions in case you wanted to. Eh, it's up to you, but we'll, we'll, we'll take, you know, some of the stuff so that we have options if things get rough. And so here we are at Plas Wilsona, or Plak Wilsona. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. I'm going to be apologizing. There's nine battles on this map. Oh, man. All right, let's pop a compass so we're not losing AP very quickly, and we'll just kind of get moving. Here's the first spot that we can be in, German leftovers. Let's grab it. Uh, we found a damaged revolver and some short ammo. Sounds good. Uh, we have Nazis right there. I'm going to steer clear of them for a little bit. Uh, there's a Nazi patrol right there. Uh, we may have to deal with one of these patrols. We may not have a choice. We're kind of stuck right now. There's two things out this way. We can investigate that and hopefully not walk into anything too terrible. Uh, there's a running gunfight going right here. There's an event over on this side. Yeah, let's go investigate that. We're going to sneak around a bit. You lay the bodies to rest in shallow graves, offering a minute of solemn silence before you set out towards the next spot. Yeah, that's all you can really do for countrymen. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, we got another one over here. If we can do this without combat, you don't really get any bonuses for combat in this game aside from, like, loot. And so if you can avoid it, I would recommend that you do. We've buried another group of comrades. It says we've got something to the south down here. Let's have a look. Hi Oh, we got caught. Apparently, we've got some goose steppers over here. Luckily, it's not that bad of a fight. I'm going to tell him to put out... Actually, save explosive projectile for right now. I might need you to heal. What I would like for you to do... Oh, he's not in a good spot right now. Okay. Uh, go ahead and open up on those two douchebags and see if you can lay them out. We've got them flanked pretty good, so... He's behind cover, so maybe he'll be okay. That surprised look on his face like, the Nazis shot me. That's kind of what they do. That's sort of what they're into. I'm going to fire a grenade at these dudes. There we go. I need to swap this battle into our favor as fast as possible and eliminate their turn economy. Killing off enemies in this game as fast as possible is super critical. Like, super critical. You want to do that about as fast as you humanly can. Uh, this guy's got pistol shots. Oh, he's suppressed right now. He can't do anything. Okay. Well, helping hand up. Get him some health back. Oof, nice miss right there. Good. Um, since he's suppressed, that kind of puts us in an awkward situation, doesn't it? Yeah, go ahead and give it to him. Uh, we'll get a couple kills next turn if we can't get a kill this turn. Apparently, he's rallying the troops. Hopefully, he doesn't regenerate or anything. That would be a massive irritation for me. Yeah, hit him with a grenade launcher. I'm sorry, with the rocket launcher again. We'll pee out him out. Oof. If it wasn't for that cover, this man would be getting chewed on right now. He'd be having a terrible day. I hit him with an explosive projectile, please. And now we've got two of the Germans eliminated. When in doubt, explode it out, man. That's a very, very real rule of warfare. If in doubt, grenade it out. I'm telling you. Like, there ain't a whole lot of problems that a well-placed grenade cannot solve. Go ahead and heal yourself up, buddy, even though it's going to mess with your stamina. Um... I guess go after... Is he still seriously suppressed? Man. Yeah, and the activation then. Like, I don't want their energy to get much lower. Otherwise, we're going to start taking double damage. And that's just something we, like, physically cannot deal with right now. If you're no longer suppressed, I'm going to ask. 
There you go. Critted him for eight damage. Nice little shot right there. Feed him up with the 1911. Grenade out right there. Big miss and a little bit of damage back to Kristoff. Let's go with a single shot back to the officer. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Nice little bit of flanking damage. Very nice. Oh, really? You fire back. Okay. All right. You're tough. I get it. You're a scary guy. Ooh, that critical heal, though. Breaking hearts out here. I'm going to end my activation early because I'm trying to get back together on our energy points right now, which are frankly, like, god-awful. There we go. There we go. What does rally troops do? Increases resilience by 40%. I think that's just like a flat damage reduction. Uh, you, sir, please hit him. Oh, God. I really needed you to hit that shot. I've noticed that I always miss critical shots. In this game and in Darkest Dungeon, if I really need something to happen right now, it never happens. Like, if this is a thing that has to happen this turn... Really? Another miss? Good lord. What is happening right now, Resistance? There you go. That's what I was looking for. Big grip of damage right there. This guy, on the other hand, is going to be tough to get rid of because he's hiding behind a barrel. And we don't really have any abilities that get him out from behind there. I know those abilities called clear out, but... Yeah, I don't think I really have anything that I can throw out there. Get him healed up real fast. Go ahead and throw some meds on him. Yeah, I had a feeling. He's been targeting this guy pretty exclusively. I don't know why he's so terrified of that guy, but he is. Like, he does not want that guy to live if he can help it. Uh, we're just going to spam heals on ourselves out here. I see no reason not to cheese kind of the activation system and give ourselves, like, you know, a ton of advantages here. What does that cost me? Contraband ammunition? It just cost me one stamina. All right, put it on him. Gives him a chance to set enemies on fire and make them bleed. Do the same thing with Kristoff. Perfect. He's got no energy left, but that was the end of our turn, so he's not going to take double damage. Uh, let's see here. What do I feel like doing? I think an explosive projectile sounds fantastic. But you missed not only the soldier, you also missed his non-mobile, non-shooting at us cover. Well done. Very, very well done, my friend. You've exceeded yourself. Hey, we got him with a bleed. Did we get him with a catch on fire? No? All right, keep shooting. You're pretty much all I have right now, so just keep firing. I think with the bleed on him, he's going to take, like, quite a bit of damage every single time he takes a turn. I've only got a single shot right there. I guess I can full auto him out, but the cover is going to eat a lot of that, and it's kind of a waste of ammo. There you go. That's the good stuff. Uh, do it again. Oh, he, ble he bled out. Never mind. We're victorious against our enemies. Good. Now, we've got another Nazi patrol right there. Kind of sneak around him. Oh, there's our last objective right there. We should get that. All right. It's not the most respectful or sanitary solution, but it's the least you can do. With the last group buried, the task is done. So we can complete the mission right now. Or we can keep tooling around looking for loot. I find it's best to kind of lightly fan the clicker like that. Just in case you run across ambushing enemies anywhere. Uh, because sometimes you see them a little bit too late. So let's grab this. Ah, flare gun, bunch of bullets. I'll take all of them. There's also an event over here. More Nazis. I don't think that's really an event, but... Ah, shit. Sometimes they spring on you like that. We should be okay, though. Everybody's looking all right except for our front runner here. Uh, let's go ahead and run clear out on this front. Exactly. It's such a heavy-hitting ability that you kind of have to lead off with it in order to soften him up and get him ready to be killed. Really, 21 damage. He might actually die. That was pretty nasty. I did not expect that. Uh, give him full auto, please. 
Anybody we can kill, so we got an SS guy. You ain't drawing me out, son. You just drew me into cover, you idiot. What are you doing? Uh, go ahead and throw a healing hand on him. Perfect. Looks good. Man, they really like that guy. I don't know what it is about his face, but they really like him. That's all I can really tell you. Oof. That man's accuracy is terrible. Please don't get suppressed. Thank you. Um. Oh, he's in the wrong position right now for that. Okay. Uh, we'll go with him then, and we're going to full auto who we can here. There we go. So one of them is now dead. Their tactical options and their activations have been reduced. I'm not really trying to fight out too many battles right now. Like, I was kind of trying to avoid this. Who do I have that can shoot right there? There you go. Kill him off. I want them to have less activations. Very nice. Okay. Energy levels are a little subpar. Man, this guy has not hit a shot yet. It's a good thing he's not like a principal part of my combat strategy. I'll tell you what. Because this man is just disappointing on the face of it. Oh, never mind. It's turn three right now. Let's go... Oh, I didn't want to pass my activation. I meant to click move. That was a misclick. Yeah, I'd like for you to move back, please. You're kind of, like, not working that great in your current position. So he resisted being suppressed. We can give him the full auto over here. I don't know if it's a good idea. Oh, 23 damage, dude. I didn't expect that through cover. That's a hell of a hit. That's a hell of a nasty hit. Grenade. I'm sorry, the Piat's doing pretty well, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Light him up with a Piat again. Apparently, the Piat is really good against cover. Pleased to see that. That's good. Do. Do host mish. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, missed the single shot. Unfortunate. Give him another one. That single shot hits like a truck. That's why I like running it. It hits like an absolute tank. And then we'll probably have Kristoff do the honors over here, actually, after I run a heal. I keep trying to, so I keep trying to click on portraits for targeting abilities. I hope they add that because I'm an MMO player, or at least I used to be. And so I just feel like clicking on portraits and whatnot is easier than clicking on things like on the field of battle. Uh, go ahead and heal Kristoff as well. Yep. Shot with a bullet. Actually, you've got him flanked. Yep. I was going to say, with that flanking shot, we should be able to eke out a little bit more loot here. Oh, never mind. It tells you which ones have loot and which ones don't. Okay. Makes sense. I don't really want to fight anymore. But, like, I do want to fight the... I do want to find this loot over here. Oh, there's an event right there. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? The group chances upon a puzzling discovery in one of the abandoned tenements. On a nightstand, what looks like a collection of poorly made dolls, you discover the ragged likeness of what is clearly a member of the uprising. However, protruding from its debris cake body, you find countless needles of all shapes and sizes, stabbing indiscriminately at points like eyes, arms, and heart. You have no idea why anybody would make a doll like this, but it's unsettling. And destroy it. You carefully remove the needles and tear the doll apart. It's probably not worth a few seconds of your time, but you could swear your team is relieved to see it gone. Nice, we got momentum right there. So we've done all the events. There's only one loot missing, so I think we're just going to complete right now. So we got a free pistol right there. Very nice. We did take a lot of damage, though. Like, during, during that engagement, we got chewed up pretty good. Now, we lost a little bit of momentum, which is a bummer. Okay. Because we didn't take the mission in those two districts, we got some attrition right there. We'll have to figure that out later. A young woman has been recovered from under the remains of a collapsed building. She explains that she was part of another resistance cell and that their last operation was disrupted by an artillery strike. With nowhere to go and no way to reach her home unit, she's decided to offer marksmanship skills to your team. Nice, we got Anna. Very cool. Next day! 
Day 6, August 6th. So we're back over here now. Yeah, we're, we're a little chewed on right now. That ain't a lie. We are a little chewed on. Uh, so how much supplies do we have right now, out of curiosity? We should have gotten a grip of supplies from that last go. And we actually did not. Hmm. Well, we're a little bit undermanned right now, which is disappointing. But, <laughs> the Blaskovich. I wonder if they, uh, na is that a real gun? The Blaskovich? Is that what BJ Blaskovich is named after from, like, Wolfenstein? Is he named after the, they name him after the gun? I don't know if, uh, it did that. Huh. Never heard of that gun before. It looks like it was whittled. Hmm. She snipes with an SMG? Really? Interesting. It's kind of terrifying. Fair enough. My name is Splattercat. We're out of time for the day. This is Warsaw. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you want to see more, I'll be streaming this live today. So swing on through my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash splattercatgaming. I'd love to have you. Leave a like on the video if you want to see more. And other than that, how you doing? Take care, everybody. I have some hot and fresh indie games for you tomorrow.